Rachel Gordon and Ace Fraley, or The Narcissist is a Short-Sighted and Sloppy Disaster Artist. Now, before going any further, I must state that I am not a doctor. Everything I say on this channel is my opinion based upon my own experience. Rachel has described Ace as a narcissist. I am taking her public statements at face value to illustrate some of the symptoms and pitfalls of narcissistic abuse in my ongoing efforts to shed light on the subject. I have now listened to all three Rachel Gordon interviews on the Sofa King Cool YouTube channel. I am now thoroughly convinced that she has been narcissistically abused by Ace Fraley. You can go on and on for days about how shabbily Ace has treated Rachel, but this is a moot point. Haven't we always known that Ace is flaky? Yes, he is an iconic entertainer with a great sound and a signature style, but just because he is all that, it doesn't make him a cool person or even a good person. I've come to learn that the most talented and gifted people tend to be the most screwed up. There's something about Ace that makes us want to root for him, despite his track record. When he would speak of how happy he was with Rachel, we were happy that Ace was stable, healthy, and accomplishing quality work. Unfortunately, a narcissist sooner or later will revert to their true self. Rachel's conversations with Sofa King Cool sound to me like a form of therapy. The fact that she goes around and around in a non-productive loop is typical and really normal for a narcissistic abuse survivor. The narcissist is a parasite and Rachel's heart and soul have been hollowed out. She has been emotionally devastated Enmeshment with the narcissist makes you feel like you're being a good human, your best self. Consequently, it's an almost unfathomable feeling of betrayal when the narcissist finally shows their true colors. You have so many questions, but really the only answer is because they're a narcissist. You can substitute whatever suitably appropriate noun you like, because they're a demon, because they're a reptilian. Hell, Ace doesn't even identify as human, and all this time we thought he was joking. But let's be serious here. This is textbook classic sociopathic behavior, and Ace can only be who he is. He has a documented 45 plus year history of being a sloppy disaster artist and no amount of tender loving care is going to ever turn him into someone grounded or sensible or conscientious. Rachel contends that she and Ace never formally broke up. There was never a conversation about how you know, this isn't working for me anymore or anything. How simple it would have been to have a sit down to discuss it and make arrangements for Rachel to transition back to a life of her own, on her own. Would that not have spoken volumes about Ace's growth and maturity? Would that have not demonstrated a respect and reverence for Rachel and the dozen years they'd shared together. Would that not have reflected favorably on the KISS legacy? But can you really imagine Ace ever being proactive or diplomatic? No, because Ace has always been a sloppy and short-sighted disaster artist. You know, I used to get really annoyed with Paul and Jean when they would bag on Ace when his contributions were so crucial to their success. But now I can see things a bit more from their perspective, 
Not that either of them are good human beings. I'll have a lot more to say about them in future videos. But Rachel stated she actually felt sorry for Ace when they first started seeing each other. Ace was very sad because he didn't want to be all alone. Of course not. He needed narcissistic supply. Narcissists will hook you in by tugging at your heartstrings. They might even tell you they have cancer. There is always going to be some kind of tragic tale of woe. That's their playbook. They will appeal to your inner knight in shining armor or Florence Nightingale. Ace then proceeded to love bomb her and made promises to stay with her forever. What would I do without my poodle? And Rachel was obviously an amazing source of narcissistic supply, a textbook codependent, willing to sacrifice her own needs and desires in order that Ace be taken care of. It all seems so obvious now, but the narcissist glamours you. You're okay with your compromises because you think the relationship is going somewhere. The reality is something in your past has trained you for that codependent role. You were taught that these are the traits that constitute being a good human. That it's good to be noble and supportive even to the point of self-sacrifice. Well, wake up people. This is narcissistic propaganda. An empathic, empathetic human being would never make such demands or ever entertain such expectations. For Rachel, who is a bright and capable person to have remained in this one-sided relationship for that long, Ace must have gaslighted her six ways from Sunday. He also manipulated her by making her feel that she was needed and valued. What would I do without my poodle? She believed that she was doing something valid with her life. So when he devalued her and threw her away, it's easy to understand why that's still so hard for her to process. The hallmark of narcissistic abuse is the disconnect between the life that you thought was and the cold, harsh reality. A quick internet search is all the background check anyone would need to run on Ace to know that he'd be nothing but trouble. But for whatever reasons, Rachel allowed herself to get enmeshed. And really, the main thing to consider and the only question that will lead to any growth is why we let the narcissist suck us in. The situation says more about ourselves than it does about them. The narcissist is simply being a narcissist. I discussed this in my video entitled, When All Your Friends Warn You About the Person You're Seeing. The narcissist is dangling some sort of carrot in front of you. The carrot itself is merely an illusion, and it will be customized just for you. But the process is always the same. Somehow, some way, we convince ourselves that the narcissist is worth it. The irony here is that Rachel was firmly enmeshed, deeply entrenched, and was perfectly content with her sexually selfish, high-maintenance control freak who refused to protect her from Gene Simmons and strung her along for 12 years. Rachel wasn't going anywhere. She would have stayed with Ace till death do us part. It's only because of the fact that Ace is a short-sighted and sloppy disaster artist that we are even treated to the sad, and sordid soap opera. I would love to have a conversation with Rachel if anyone knows how to get a hold of her. 
Uh, Rachel, if you're watching this, I would love to have a conversation with you. Narcissistic abuse is the reason that this channel exists. Anyway, uh, everyone out there, thank you for watching. Please share, please subscribe, please like, and take care of yourselves. After Arts out. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, I'd be delighted to have you. Your support will help keep the content fresh and always evolving. Thanks again for your support. After Arts out.